Welcome to the Homeschool Together podcast. Where one working mom and a stay-at-home dad help you navigate the nuts and bolts of the growing and dynamic world of homeschooling. With a focus on early learners. Like me! All the ins and outs of building and maintaining your homeschool life. Homeschool! Find out tips and tricks to make things like this easier. I'm reading! And ultimately, enjoy educating your kids. And what's that last thing? Have fun together! Did I do good, Daddy? (laughs) Yeah, you did, sweetie. Good job. Hello and welcome back to Homeschool Together. Thank you for joining us. We know it is deep into the summer and you might be looking at things to do later in the few years. But before you do that, head into our show notes and click on all the links, especially our YouTube link, and follow us there and hit subscribe and notify. And we'll send you little cute videos of us talking about homeschool into your inbox. This week, we are going to be talking about sports but we're not going to be it's not going to be a comprehensive thing um it's going to be kind of our experiences so far and then a lot of um of what we have learned for some of the older kids um we have friends who have uh student athletes who are at the high school level um so we can speak a little bit to our their experience not our experience we'll talk a little bit about our experience for younger learners and we have some friends who have Um, middle school athletes as well and so we can talk a little bit about the opportunities that may be available there we're not talking to be totally comprehensive but um i think it'll be very informative especially if you guys are uh, thinking about doing sports if you are you know a competitive fun sporting family and you guys enjoy that type of thing and you think that's going to be something your children are going to be interested in i hope this podcast will help you guide you through that now let's talk a little bit about the landscape um very often it's not It's not foolproof. It's not guaranteed to be this is what you have, but this is a very common landscape that you may experience when you are first stepping out into sports, whether it's youth sports, um, maybe upper elementary sports if you're just starting out. Um, Let's talk about where you may be able to play sports. Right. And this is important because when you're, you know, if you have a... This is as complex as scheduling for preschools. Right. Well, (laughs) if you have a little one, nobody really tells you how the whole sports thing works. And we know that um, sports ends up being one of the places where we, our kids make friends and we make family friends and that kind of stuff happens. So it's really tough to figure out and and i feel like there's not a good listing anywhere no of like hey here are all the sports available to your child um you know and here's all the different places that you can go so uh yeah so it's not very well known and oftentimes i think the best source of information is going to be like your local uh facebook group if you have like a mom's facebook group Mm -hmm. or a local um for the county or something for parents something like that this is a great place because Honestly, the moms be in the know. I, I don't know why this is, but they're the ones that know about all the things that are happening. It's for local. Sports. It's a local gossip mill. Well, it's just it's just because there's not good, at least in our area. And if you have this in your area, then you are so lucky. But we don't have this. There's no good central place to go and see like this is everywhere. And I think the problem is because there's just so many different people providing sports opportunities. So yeah. you have your kind of uh, like uh, usually you have your your club based. Uh, or not club, um, let's see, your like Boys and Girls Club, YMCA. That's the one that probably a lot of people have heard of. And right, I think that's the easiest thing. And the best way to get on the notifications there is to sign up to their newsletters. And if your local mm-hmm. YMCA or Bo- Boys and Girls Club has you know, like a Facebook page or something like that, subscribe to that, follow that. Right. A lot of times they will be pushing that information out. And that that's a very easy way to get the schedules, find Mm -hmm. out what sports are coming up. They always very often have a schedule page on like when things are going to be coming up. So they only have like our club at least only has like this is the next season. The next season. So I can see what's for fall of 2024. I can see what they've got. I can't see what's for spring or winter. I just know because the previous year. So that's a place where it's really good to look on the Facebook groups and see if you can figure out what they did in previous years. Now, Now with the Boys and Girls Club and the YMCA, you don't necessarily have to be members at the YMCA to participate in the sports no there'll but be a different sometimes price. sometimes they will give you a discount if you are a member right one of the cool things so the um, boys and girls club will start sports at least in our area and i think this is probably pretty typical 
pre-K is the earliest. Yeah, but not for every sport. No, it's only, only for like, like the, the most popular sports. There's like t-ball, basketball, and uh, soccer. There's soccer. So- one, yeah. Start that yeah. early, I think. Um, but everything else would start at kinder or above, like volleyball starts at first. There's some other, there's, there's different tiers. Yeah. At the YMCA, they have this program called Rookie Sports. At least our YMCA does. And they actually start sports at age three. Mm-hmm. So they have sports for ages three and four. Um, at our club, if you're members, those are actually free. Your kids can mm-hmm. just go and attend for free um, if you're members there. Otherwise, you can pay to go. Yep. Um, so we tried that with our three-year-old. It didn't really work. It was a disaster, but it was a disaster because of our three-year-old didn't want to do it. Right. She was super excited to go and then not excited to share the ball. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, The first kid stole the ball, and she's like, that's it. I'm out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, was, it was cute for the couple of pictures that we got of it. Yeah. Um, so, so there's those kind of levels. And so let's talk about that because... We've played at this point. We've done four sports, um, so yep. we can talk a little bit. And we've done it across different. We've done um, we've done those types. There's so, also private clubs. There's also private clubs, and these are going to be the more difficult ones to find out information about. Um, right. These will most likely be newsletter based. They may have may or may not have a website, um, and they may there may be a different group running different sports. There may also mm-hmm. be multiple groups running the same sport right where you may have two separate like, soccer leagues or right you may have a league running their baseball league that is completely separate from the football league or the the cheer team or the right. or the soccer team sometimes you'll have one that runs multiple sports yeah. kind of like boys and girls club does but it's a club and sometimes you'll have like you say they're all doing their own individual thing and they compete in different areas that and that one is like you just you got to do some googling you've got to yep. ask around and then you'll know what's offered there yep. um those ones have different different levels of competition as well. Those ones are going to be ones that are going to be uh, on the competitiveness level. Your YMCA and Boys and Girls Club is going to be your lowest level they of accept, competitiveness. They accept all incomers and they they ask likely that every child plays and, and exactly. all that type of thing. Your but, clubs are going to be where yeah. you're starting to get... <laughs> you're, a little bit more discerning and the, because they may be limited in the amount of teams they field, they will likely have tryouts. So sometimes For older clubs. Sometimes you may have heard things like AAU um, basketball or select basketball or select volleyball, and those are not like brand names or anything. They just call them select, and those are t- very often privately run groups. Or you'll call them feeder teams. Feeder teams and 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 things of that nature, and those will either be affiliated with say the middle school JV varsity squad for the high school. Um, sometimes schools are affiliated with like, say the boys and girls club, and that is their feeder program where they feed a lot of children in and eventually, you know, they, they cultivate an experience and then they, they get the cream of the crop winds up on the varsity team at the local high school. Um, sometimes those are private organizations. Sometimes they use like boys and girls club, YMCA. It really depends on what is the culture within your community. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times there is a you can find that conduit from the varsity team and down to the JV team and down to the middle right. school team. And then you can figure out, um, you know, where where do you need to be placed in order to feed into those programs? Because it used to be just like you play for the middle school and then you, you go to the high school. JV, you just yeah. play, the, play for freshmen. Then you yeah. play JV. And it doesn't really work that way anymore, at least not in our area. Yeah. Really to get into that pipeline into high school, mm-hmm. there is a, a, you know, a select you know, four month league that you do instead, um, in, in the winter for like basketball, for example. So it depends what sport it is, but there's definitely that. And and I know you might be asking yourself a question is, well, Matt, Ariel, I'm a homeschooler. You know, I can't participate. Can I participate in those sports? We'll talk about that at the end about what that is like. So we've kind of laid the foundation is that you have like a boys and girls Mm -hmm. club, probably a, a YMCA one or the other, or both. We have both. And then you have these private leagues that are doing things. Sometimes these private leagues are travel leagues. Sometimes these are just local leagues. If you have enough towns in your area to um, support kind of a private private system, we have a select basketball team here in our area um, that is a quote unquote travel team, but they only travel like maybe an hour at the most. Um, some places will have you know, soccer teams that travel five or six hours and you have to get hotel rooms and things of that nature. So you have to gauge what your family is willing to commit to. Now, that is very often at the elite levels. Right, it's much more elite. Elite levels, those are tryout teams. Those are your child may or may not make the team. Mm -hmm. Um, 
and that is tends to be higher in the grade levels. That's not going to start off when you're kindergarten, first grade, second grade. No, no, no. You're talking about something that's more like third, fourth, fifth grade when that stuff begins to occur. Mm -hmm. And it's not guaranteed for every single sport that you'll have travel teams at those middle grades. And right. you'll have to gauge where your commitment is on, on those sports where your child's commitment is on those sports, what you want to commit financially, because yep. that can be a big outlay as yeah. well. Um, but with respect to where you, you're probably going to start, it's just the Boys and Girls Club, YMCA, right. and, local leagues. And then the, the third main place, you know, you got your kind of YMCA, Boys and Girls Club, you have your club leagues, and then you have your private businesses that are going to teach uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and yep. gymnastics, gymnastics and things like that. Dance classes, even in cheer, there might be some cheer and dance stuff as well. Right. Yeah. So all that stuff is going to be done at, you know, private studios. Um, they may or may not compete depending mm -hmm. on the levels. Uh, you know, we know da dance around here starts at age, you can start at age two. Two. So I gymnastics mean, as well in our area. Um, starts we have, really early. We have multiple gymnastics, uh, squ uh, was it like kind of organizations here in our town? We also have like a ninja program. Like that's the um, kind of the obstacle course uh, running and jumping and climbing type of thing. So there's a lot of different opportunities available, especially for sports. And, you know, you may think the, the traditional baseball, basketball, football is the sport. But, you know, I really consider, you know, dance classes as a sport, uh, gymnastics as a sport, even though that may not be traditionally um, known as an option for sports when you're starting to consider it or think about sports, but absolutely think about those private, you know, dance studios, those private um, gymnastics places. Those tend to be in kind of like commercial areas. We have a big commercial uh, building area uh, here in our town, and, and they kind of have the dance studios in there. They have a bunch of the gymnastics centers are in there. And so you'll find these little places. Um, so just go ahead and do some Google searching. Google can be a help, help for those type of things where there's a physical location. Almost, uh, almost without doubt, they will have a you know a Google Maps you know entry. They'll have a website and everything, and you can find out all the information. Yep. So then the the next thing after you've after you've got you have the lay of the landscape is trying to decide where you're gonna put oh, yeah. your child in. And this is where and when uh, some of these things they fill up really quick. Yeah. So <laughs> it's like oh you know shoot I missed the you know it, it, like I. For, this is silly, but like I have an alarm set because dance registration is on Monday at noon. And I know that if I don't get on there well, at so, noon and register, I will probably miss out on some of the classes. Well, tell them about your aquatic. Uh, so there's an aquatic center right. down the road, um, not big, big, massive aquatic center. Right. And we wanted swim lessons for N our kids. Not just swim lessons. The homeschool swim lessons. Right, for homeschool swim lessons. And they were like, oh, we're opening up registration on this day. I got up at 7 a.m. and I got up to register and it was like, oh, no, it started at 5 a.m. and it was already full. It was full. For homeschool. So, <laughs> so yeah, so so that's kind of the, the problem with it is that sports are uh, not always something that you can come to late. You have to mm -hmm. kind of know what's coming up. So you have to Be think. Be a little proactive. Right. Think before the season, you know, look in general. These are all the sports opportunities. I think for a lot of us with really young kids, right, we have a five-year-old and an eight-year-old, we're thinking about exposing them to lots of different things. Yeah, yeah. Because we're not really sure what they're going to like. We don't want to do and anything then, too and, intense. And, and I've always said, and I've always, you know, I'm a big sports guy. I love sports. Played a lot of sports for a long time. Um, I'm not pushy about sports. I'm not one of those type of parents. Uh, no, you know, no, I don't do that. Um, I always give my children the out. I go, if you don't like this sport, I'm okay with it. You have to finish the season because we committed to it. But at the end of that season, you, you don't have to. No matter how much effort daddy has put in, no matter how much I've helped you and whatnot, if it's just not for you, it's absolutely fine. So definitely, we are very much an exposure sports type of family. Right. I want to see if you like something. If something catches fire, it could be gymnastics. It could be dance. And I, I don't, it doesn't bother me at all. Yeah, yeah. Whatever I don't, it is. I'm not going to like, I don't need you to play basketball like daddy did. I don't need you to play golf like daddy did. You can do anything. I just want you to be active and have fun and find passion and in, in, in some physical activity. Right. And friendships. And, yeah. and, you know, there's obviously there's lots of values learned through sports. There's yeah. perseverance and, you know, all of that. So there's lots of good things. So deciding where you're going to um, put your kid again. I think you get the best results by talking to other parents that you know in the area. Yep. Um, you know, if you meet parents when you're picking up your kid from preschool, like we did, <laughs> you know, it's like, hey, are, you know, what what things are you got your kid enrolled in? You know, hey, do you have older siblings? What kind of sports do you do? I mean, I feel like we have to ask each other and really 
um, hear from each other about where is good and where is not because you can't really get it based off like a Google reviews. I mean, Facebook may be a little bit, but I think the best thing that you can do is talk to other parents that you trust in your area about what worked and what didn't. Um, like we said, we found the less rigor to be at the Boys and Girls Club and YMCA levels. These are all parent volunteer coaches, which I think this is my only problem with parent coaches. Well, I have, you know, there's, there's problems with parent coaches, but... Go, go. Just continue, Ariel, as you stare at a parent coach. Go ahead. <laughs> Great. What's wrong with parent coaches? So, so the the two the, the couple problems with parent coaches. One is because they're depending on volunteers. You never know what day your practices are are going to be on. You usually know your games are going to be on Saturday sometime, um, or most whatever. Of, most of our experiences have been Saturday games. Um, yeah, pretty much everything. And they and they say that like you know the Y or the Boys and Girls Club say is it going to be Saturday games? Even when we did we did a private soccer league at one time. I said yeah. It's going to be Saturday games. So that was easy. But as far as like the practice times, you won't know what the times or the days are. Mm -hmm. This makes it very difficult to do other things. Like I say, I'm going to be signing our kids up for dance, but mm -hmm. I've already signed up our youngest for soccer and our oldest for volleyball. And I don't know what days those are going to be on. So if it ends up conflicting with my dance classes, then they're, we're going to have to figure out which one we cancel. Well, luckily, so, <laughs> you, 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 I'll be able to control one of those. Right. So that <laughs> that is the nice thing. So if you yeah. really want to have some control over when your practices are, consider being a coach or an assistant coach. Yeah. Um, if you have any, like, you know, kind of drive to do it, please do. Because what happens is if mm -hmm. they don't have – they they – They'll either twist somebody's arm to be the coach, the parent coach, um, the, if nobody steps say, up. Or they'll say, we'll cancel the season and the team. Or they'll cancel the team. Or they'll assign, like, a teenager to be your coach Oof. who may or may not show up. We've had a lot of problems with with we, that. We've also known families that have had trouble, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, if that it's... That was one of the reasons why I became, uh, what was it, the volleyball? I was I still stepped up to be the volleyball coach right. for a week or two. And then I, I really enjoyed it, so... Well, yeah. And but I had no volleyball experience. It happens. And Un undefeated season. <laughs> I think the why in our, at least in our area, the why is really good about having a, um, like a precise thing for practices about like, this is what you're going to do at every practice. So it really guides you. The boys and girls club in our area doesn't do that. But if, if you're not sure if it might be for you, um, you know, check with the local club and say like, Hey, what kind of guidance is given to coaches? Cause mm -hmm. you coach volleyball and you have never played volleyball. Um, but there was, it was enough that you could do it. So, I think, you know, if you think you might have the bandwidth to do it, please volunteer to be a parent coach because if you don't, you could get stuck with just like some random employee or, yeah. you know, some parent who absolutely isn't good with kids or didn't want to be there and just got like forced to do it. So um, please step up if you can. But that's the hard <laughs> thing. When you sign up for, you know, karate classes or dance or gymnastics or, or whatever. Or Brazilian jiu-jitsu or something like whatever, that. Whatever. You know exactly what time and what day it is. And, and when, they have teachers and instructors in line, yeah. Yeah, so you know you're going to get good quality instruction. But with the Boys and Girls Club and the Y, you're, you may run into this issue. Even when it comes to, you know, basketball, even if they've already, you know, picked who the coaches are going to be for even if it's like select or AAU or whatever, mm -hmm. you're still not going to know what day is. So it makes That's it true. really difficult to do um, – to juggle and if you have multiple kids who are yep. in multiple things it's like so you know right now we're like well we hope that the soccer and the volleyball are not on the same nights so yep. that we don't have to split up and go different directions but you know if it's just if you only have one parent that can drive them to practices that gets to be really difficult so understand the landscape there um if you can get any advanced information about what nights things are going to be or if you're the coach a lot of times you will get to say hey, I really need practices to be Mondays and Wednesdays, and they'll often accommodate you. Oh, and very often practices are, for the younger ages, are once a week. Um, but for some sports, once you get into like the second, third, fourth grade level, um, it very often becomes two nights a week. And right. those are practices t tend to be about an hour long each time. Uh, and so you have to understand when that is. If it's falling through the dinner hour, we tend to eat dinner a little bit earlier. We're like a five, six o'clock dinner family. We, we know a lot of families that are more like seven o'clock dinner families. Mm -hmm. um, we're, we're trying to put in the kids that doesn't you know, sleep well, around that time. We're trying to we're get trying them to. moving that direction anyway. So if you're having practice fall between those hours, we just did a basketball camp and the camp was 4.30 to 7.30. I was like, oh my gosh when are these children eating? It's crazy. It's like, right. You, they all have like a snack before they go and then they yeah. eat when they get home. So, it was a little weird. Yeah. So, so dinners can be a little bit of a challenge if you're thinking about sports, if you're, you know, if you're lucky enough to get like a six to seven o'clock. Unfortunately, like if you get a late practice, imagine if you get a seven to eight o'clock practice and the kid's not home until 
eight thirty, they got to shower, clean up, mm-hmm. and everything. They're not in bed till nine. So think of you know th- those can be some challenges there as well. That's the other good advantage of being the coach is yeah. that you get to help and set not only days but sometimes times. And you had the great experience this last year that you coached both of our daughters yeah. at, at basketball at the same time. They were on different teams, of course, um, but because you had stepped up to dual coach, they made sure that your practices were back to back and that your games were at the same location. So it, it, you know if you it wasn't think, at this like. It wasn't at like the same, it wasn't back to back hours, but no. they were at the same location. So I wasn't having to drive from one town to the next to make yeah, a game. Yeah, for the games. So, you know, check that out too. Talk to your local club if it's like, hey, I'm interested in volunteering, but I'm going to have two kids in these different sports or yeah. whatever, different ages. Um, you know, can you accommodate? A lot of times they are so happy to have coaches that they will be, if they, they can accommodate you, they will. They, they bend over backwards for coaches and then they doubly bend over backwards for coaches who are taking a, a multiple teams they do yeah they, they called us the twofers well there were like three or four of us who had two teams um i don't know if there was anyone who had three teams but i, I know that there would was, be crazy that would be crazy um but i know they they at least had two teams and i was one of them so so our experience with so we've done we've done private we've done gymnastics and dance um mm-hmm. uh and then we just we had a dance recital tonight <laughs> we did. um we've done boys and girls club we've done why we've done private club so kind of let's let's just run through our experience a little bit um with the with the boys and girls YMCA, yeah. we found in general parents weren't super uptight in in general about things. Um, the I, competition, everyone was pretty friendly. It, it we didn't find that there was any crazy intensity. I, we haven't run into any. You know, I know we're always concerned about like, as a coach. I'm always concerned about the parent who gets a little over enthusiastic and you know right. gets gets intense and maybe has some issues and stuff like that. I have not run into much of that, if at all. Mm-hmm. We've had like one incident here and maybe one incident over the course of like three three years or so, three or four years. But other than that, it's been very benign. Most of the parents are just happy to be there. The kids are just happy to be there. They just yeah. want the kids to have fun. And I think at this early level, I we have not seen that intense competition yeah. um, really boil over. Um, but I have a feeling in the next maybe two or three years, we're going to start to see a little bit more of that competition come through. Right. Um, we're going to see players have a little bit more of intensity on wanting mm-hmm. to win um, and the parents' intensity coming along with that. So I, I have a feeling we're going to see more of that. I I had the, the benefit of about 10 years ago kind of volunteering for a 12-year-old uh, AAU team. Uh, I was young. I did as an assistant coach because I thought it was something I might want to get into. Mm-hmm. And I have to admit that was like there were sixth graders, I believe they were, and that was the, the parents could get pretty intense. Well, that was a feeder team. It was a feeder team. It, it was, was a select. It was a select team. They did tryouts, and not every kid made it. And um, those were those were parents who were expecting those kids to like go play high school ball, maybe yeah. play maybe play low college ball if they could. You yeah. know, they were they had high expectations. I yeah, think they were high high hopes. <laughs> the, yes, they did. I think you're right. As we get older, we're gonna as the kids get older, we're gonna see more of it. But we did play club soccer for yep. first grade which so similar kind of age and parents were much more intense in club soccer it was because i think that's it was going to get you know the, the competition was going to get steeper in club and, and it was very- it wasn't tryout or anything it was just normal first grade but it was like oh well it's like this local soccer club we'll try it out and we really didn't have a good experience with it so i have yeah we didn't have a good experience but also another thing to be concerned about not that it's like something that makes or breaks things but there are teams that are assembled (laughs) very much like the you know kind of like the (laughs) x-men and they they go they go just it's exactly like that there's cyclops and rogue and all that stuff but they um they know kids and they have kids that play together Mm -hmm. and they keep coming back and the coach calls them and then those leagues have the ability that when they when they um you know when they sign up for the league that they can put on which coach they want and all that type of stuff. And so very often you will have a team that might be overloaded. Now that you can still request your coaches you and can, your, and buddy kids as well but with yeah, like, like teammates. And a lot of times, especially, boys and girls club. especially with like boys and girls club and YMCA, they pay attention to where kids are going to school and they do try to match them to the school. So right. If, and if they're homeschooled, they'll try to match. They match the homeschoolers. Kids. Um, like we go to the parent partnership, but also they will partner it because they know that's a homeschool uh, partnership. They'll partner us with other homeschoolers. And so all the homeschoolers will be together. Yeah. Um, 
We haven't had too many of them yet. It's been ma- mainly the public school kids, but we and, have run into a few. And they can request you as a coach yep. and things, but I, I think that it's more like, hey, he was a good coach last season. We would love to be with him again. Exactly, it's yeah. less like you're trying to assemble the dream team. Well, they're, which they're, well on the soccer one, it what happened see, in soccer? In soccer, they were trying to assemble their dream team. So they those began clubs, to yeah, they really cared. They cared a lot about winning. The, yeah. Some of the coaches that we were up against on other teams were very intense. There's definitely a, a girl or two I wanted to check the birth certificate on. Yeah, they did not seem to be that age. <laughs> yeah. So so in general, if you're gonna go with a with a private type thing, just know that um, you know, parents who are more um more excited about that sport, really going to be into it, they're not going to go to the Boys and Girls Club or the Y. No. Those ones who are like, my kid, I love baseball. We're going to, I'm going to play baseball. The kids can play. Oh yeah, they're all into it. Those kind of, they're going to play the private club. Yeah. They're not even going to try to go to the YMCA because they're not going to feel like that's good enough. Y- so, y- YMCA and the and the Boys and Girls Club, I mean, I'm, I'm sure in different areas they may have different experience, but for us, it has been very much a, we're here to let the kids enjoy the, their experience. Right. And it's a great way if you don't know what yep. your kid might like. I, it's a very low barrier to entry because everybody gets to play. Um, and it's just, it's kind of like if you have like a, I used to play parks and recreation. So if you have a parks and recreation department, that would be the same type of thing. Yeah, yeah. Everyone gets to play. It's a great way to feel out of sport before you go to a club. I, I would not recommend your first foray into the sport to be the club, even though they do have some that are down that young. I just feel like um, the intensity of the parents and some of the other coaches was not our coach was good, but the, some of the others, I mean, our, our poor girls, they, they lost every game yeah, like, hammered badly. Um, and it was, it, you know, it was just like, wow. And, and the other the teams the were season, just it, it like, just wasn't enjoyable. It wasn't enjoyable. And the other teams would just run up the score. And it, it was yeah. just, we haven't had that kind of experience playing more of this parks and recreation ish type of, yeah. of ball. So, um, just know that. Then our other experience has been we have we've used a private dance studio. We also have dance at our school, um, and we we've done gymnastics. In general, you know, I think you get what you pay for. The mm-hmm. private lessons at the dance studio are all really good. The dance recital we went to tonight was excellent. It was are you going to pay a lot for it? Yes, you are. Um, <laughs> what so, was it? So like just ballpark a cost for? So I think we pay. I want to say we pay like sixty five a month. For or, dance, or eighty-five a month, maybe it maybe it's eighty-five a month for a dan- for for dance or for is, for gym gymnastics. That's just one class a week. That's one class a week, um, and then the same about dance. What was the season cost for boys and girls um, so it's basketball? Like, it's like one hundred and fifty bucks, I think. And, and that it's is like three I think, months. I think that was like yeah, two Jan- months. It was like two and a half, three months right. uh, for that, and that includes all the practices and all the games. Um, with almost every one of these things, you get the gear. Like we got jerseys um, that were donated via WNBA program. So all mm-hmm. the girls got WNBA jerseys. All the boys got NBA jerseys um, for their teams. And, and no shorts, but just the jerseys. Right. When we did club, it was like shorts, shorts and shirts and, and socks. socks. I mean, and it all was that all, stuff, yeah. It was all very much like that. Yeah. Um, so like like gear and everything wise, they, they do support a, a lot of things. So cost wise, it wasn't too bad. One of the things that I do like about going to a private place, whether it's a dance studio or karate or, you know, um, gymnastics or whatever, is that, you know, because it's not like a sport with a season in the same way, Mm -hmm. you can just kind of add drop. Mm -hmm. So it's we can go and then if at some point that just doesn't work out for us or whatever, we can drop. We may not be able to get back into the class. Maybe they go too far and then you can't get back in because you missed too much or, or because the class is full. Yeah. yeah, there's a wait list or something. But if you decide to actually play a sport with a team, it's like, hey, I paid this money to play this season. And then that's kind of gone and you're on this team. Now the team's counting on you. So there's a different level of commitment necessary. So we've had those conversations with our daughters like, well, if we sign you up for this, you have to finish the season. It's not super long, but you can't just abandon your team. You got to like finish the season. Whereas if we go with dance or gymnastics or karate, we could say, hey, let's try this out. And, you know, if it doesn't work, then then that's cool. We don't have to sign up next month. So that's a little bit easier. So if you feel like you're not sure if you as a family want to make a commitment or your student doesn't want to make a commitment, trying something at a studio or a smaller place is going to give you more flexibility. So before we go on to middle school, high school sports, talking a little bit about the experience, the all these 
leagues and everything will go all the way up to typically about middle school. Eighth um, grade, usually. Eighth grade, typically, um, for these sports. So you could live in the Boys and Girls Club all the way to high school. Now, with respect to sports, maybe in the off season, very often there are camps and in, in, uh, available. Right. And a lot of times those camps may be run by the private organizations um, as kind of like a week-long camp through the mm-hmm. summer. Which are pretty expensive. Yeah, which can get very very expensive. Um, there are away camps that, that may be at universities or, or big high schools that are you know very famous for certain types of sports, whatever that might be. So if, if local camps were, are $2 signs, then yes. go-away camps are $4 signs. And those are very often <laughs> like dorms and overnight yeah. things. We used to do that for high school. We would go to a uh, camp in Florida and we would stay over, and it would be like a seven, eight, eight day thing, yes. and it was a, it was pretty pricey. Four dollars. Yeah, four dollars. And then uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna use the restaurant dollar signs. But um, a lot of times the high schools and the local uh, high schools will have uh, camps. As They're part like of, mini camps. They're like mini camps. This is the one dollar sign. One point two dollar sign. I mean, yeah. it was pretty cheap. It was pretty I, cheap. I think it was like seventy five bucks for three days. For three days, and it was three three hours a day. Yep. Um, and that was pretty good. And they got a shirt. And they got a shirt at the end. And, and it was a fundraiser for the high school team. Yeah. So it was, it had a good, and it was run by the varsity athletes. Right. And uh, their the, coach. the head coach was there kind of overseeing everything, but all the activities were run by the varsity. Uh, and there was a, a stratification of different age groups from uh, JV, middle school, all the way down to, I think they did second grade. So there's mm-hmm. all these different age ranges. So you can always find kids who are in your age range and they partnered those kids in those same clusters of age ranges. And so they were playing against kids of their age range and everything. That was a really cool experience. And those right. will be available, but those are very hard to know when and where to sign right. up for. And like, the one that we're doing next week, the only way to find out about it was like you had to follow them on Instagram. Right. I had to follow the high school volleyball team on Instagram from the town next to us <laughs> because I had heard about another mom last year on volleyball. I was like, yeah, there was this great two-day camp that was like oh, like 50 bucks or something yeah. that the high school volleyball players put on. And sometimes the camps are at weird times. When is the uh, the the winter camp for basketball? The winter camp. Yeah, there's a winter camp our high school girls put it's on. It's like the day after Christmas. Yeah. It's like between Christmas and New Year's. So anyway. <laughs> My best advice with this thing is to do to email the high school coach for the sport that you're interested in in your area mm-hmm. and ask if they're going to have a camp anytime they will, during they the will year. know everything. That's exactly what I did for our school because I was like trying to plan and we were trying to plan Girl Scout camps and I didn't yep. want it to be the week of basketball camp. And so I just emailed them. It was very nice because they know that these camps are going to be the kids that are eventually going to feed into their teams. Now, sometimes there is a restriction on camps like this because they're run from the school district that you have to be in their school district to attend. Yeah. We're lucky that the volleyball one doesn't have that requirement. But some of them are because they don't, they might be, have limited spots and they don't want to like waste space on kids who are not ever going to come to their high school and play. Yeah. So, um, so just know that. But if there's a sport you're really interested in, you know, ask. And if, the, if the high school coach isn't having a camp, they might know of one going on in the local area that's put on mm-hmm. by a club or something else. So they'll be in the know. I think that's a great place to go to find that information. Absolutely. Now let's talk a little bit about um, middle school and high school sports. Middle right. school sports is the first time very often that you will have a sport that is run by a school. In elementary, very often they do not have sports. Mm-mm. They may have some like club activities and yeah, things of that nature. So. But for the most Part, middle school will be the first time, at least here in the United States. I don't know about in overseas. Yeah, we can't speak for international. Um, but uh, for for us, middle school will be the first time you will likely have a basketball team. You will likely have a volleyball team for um, for girls. You have boys and girls basketball. And track. There may be a track team, and if you're lucky, you may have a football team. Girls may also have there may be some cheer opportunities, and maybe track and field as well. Mm -hmm. So it may be limited. It's going to be limited when compared to, say, um, the high school. High school will have have a huge suite of sports that are available. Also, cross country. There will be running opportunities um, if you are interested Mm -hmm. in that. And that will be for likely for boys and girls. Um, That's a pretty cheap sport (laughs) to find. (laughs) Yeah, it is. It is not a lot of gear. Bring your own shoes. And so um, with that, the question is, well, I'm a homeschooler. Am I allowed to participate in that? And the answer is is sometimes. Sometimes. (laughs) So it depends on your state. There was a a law called the Tim Tebow law. um, 
and it hasn't been adopted in all states. Yeah. So, and it, it really depends. Some states you, some states, states you just can. Yeah. Some states you have to ask for permission from your local school to do it. Um, we happen to be in an area that we are allowed to go. And in fact, our high school team, our local high school has several homeschool members on every team from, mm-hmm. from what we hear. So like there's plenty of homeschoolers uh, and, participating. And, and we know there are a number of kids who are at our parent partnership who are also on the sports teams at our local high school. So we are fortunate enough that our track will, you know, hopefully see, you know, if, if my, if our daughters want to play varsity athletics, they will have a home at the local high school. Right. And that does not mean that we have to transfer in. We don't have to do any, there may be some paperwork we have to do. Yeah. It's Um, pretty minimal though. But because we're at the parent partnership, we're technically in the district when we're technically, we are technically on paper public schoolers. Um, but we are homeschoolers. Yeah. I know. <laughs> yeah, running a homeschool podcast, yeah, yeah. technically public schoolers. <laughs> but we're te- um, but, but the yes, way that, the because way of the, our electives we take there. Because of the electives we take there, they consider us public schoolers. Um, but we don't need to do some weird transfer thing into that school. We're just allowed to play. And, and even if we were just members of the homeschool community yep. in our local yeah. area, we could still go to the school and say, hey, you know, our daughter wants to try out for yep. this sport and, and she'd be able to. But that's not the case everywhere. So really, this is a matter of you looking up in your area if you're unsure if that's allowed. And then and then you can at least know. Even if you can't participate for your school, there are, if, if you've got a kid who's really into a sport, there is, I mean, we, we just met this D1 basketball player, yep. a division one um, basketball player that was doing some, um, one on one lessons and stuff. some yeah. lessons in the local area. She was home for the summer. Um, and we had talked with her a little bit and she played on like travel teams all the way through high school. So if you can't play for your local high school, but you have a, a uh, child that is really into a sport, it does not mean that you cannot keep playing in high school. Yeah. You're just going to have to find a private option for it. And a lot of times there are private options, especially for kids. Now, those are all going to be like tryout based and all that stuff. So yeah. they're not going to be for kids who just want to like, you know, have fun with the sport. Um, but just know that there's, you know. There's still, if your kid wants like a college scholarship, there are still opportunities to get those things, even if you can't play for your local high school. Absolutely, and and we have we have a set of friends who had their son is, um, he was uh, on the cross country team at our local high school, and and he's he's been he had a great experience and very welcoming. And Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not that it's going to be promised to be welcoming at every school, but. From at least in our, within our district, we have heard overwhelmingly that all the homeschoolers are very welcomed on the sports teams. Yeah. They contribute. They're they're not docked for anything. They're um, they're able to participate and whatnot. So we've had heard really good experiences uh, with that. Our we have another set of friends who has a a, a young gentleman who may be on the middle school team uh, for I think cross country this coming year, and he's 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 excited about that one. Yeah. Um, the question is, is he going to play basketball for them? And I, I have asked if they, he is, but he's going to actually stay in the boys and girls club to do basketball and then do possibly cross country through the middle school. So you can do that kind of split in, in yeah. your household if that's something that's interesting to you or, or you, needed. Yeah, you absolutely can. I think it's been it's been very heartening for us to hear yeah. how accepting the coaches in our area have been yeah. and accommodating to homeschoolers and making sure their parents are informed about practice times and things yeah. because otherwise it would all go through the school email system and the kids don't have a school email because they're homeschooled. Yeah. Um, so the experience that we have heard in our area is overwhelmingly positive, but this is again, a, you know, your mileage may totally vary, um, that you're going to have to, you know, look around in your local area, find out from other parents, what's their experience like and what kind of options are available to you. So I think one of the last things we want to talk about before we, we close out this little sports primer, um, is about gear. So all the stuff, <laughs> all the stuff, there's just, there's so much stuff. Uh, so the, f- the, as the one who mostly bought the stuff, um, my, my advice to you would be if you sign your child up for a sport to call the office of wherever you're signed them up with and find out what gear they're going to need and specifically what kind. So for example, we signed our daughter up for volleyball last year and I was like, okay, great. We're signing her up for volleyball. Fantastic. We know. Go she, to Amazon, buy volleyball. <laughs> we're going to need a volleyball and we're going to need some of those knee pads. Okay, great. So we got those and we get to the first week of practice and we did not know that there's like this thing called a volley light, which is like a training volleyball. And they use that up until like fourth grade. And we had no idea that that was the wrong volleyball or well, at least in our area, they use this volleyball. in our area. 
The same thing will happen when it comes to soccer balls. The soccer balls are different sizes. Basketball as well. Right. So There are different sizes of basketballs based on the age group. And we found it really helpful for our kids to practice with them just even a little bit before you go to the first practice so that they kind of have a general idea. We tried to like turn on the sport, talk a little bit about rules. You know, when it came to soccer, we got them their cleats and shin guards and everything early and the soccer ball. And we kicked it around the yard a little bit, just kind of showed them some real basics when they were young, not nothing crazy. Um, but you're going to want to make sure you have the right gear. You want to show up to that first practice, having the right things. If you're going to practice beforehand with basketball, you're going to want to know what height the net needs to be at because it's at different heights. And there are different rules for every level of the sports as well. Sometimes they'll publish them for you. Sometimes they won't. For us, for example, we're very into the basketball, so you know all about it. But like, um, in the first and second grade, the basket was at eight feet, eight eight feet, feet. Yep. and there was no calling traveling or, and no ball stealing and no court pressure. There was all these things that we knew about the game. Yeah. Whereas now we know she's going to be going up to third, fourth grade basketball. It's a nine foot rim. A nine foot rim. We Steal- practice stealing on. is allowed. No pressing. And there's, they're there's going to a- call double dribble. They're going to keep score. Yeah. So there's, so having a little bit of information going in mm-hmm. could be helpful. It's not mandatory or anything, but It is nice to make sure that you got the right gear and that you kind of know the landscape of what you're walking into so you can prepare your kid. Uh, We really enjoy having a basketball hoop at home. Mm -hmm. I'll post the one that we bought. It's not super expensive, but it has worked just fine for us. Um, And so I think that that was a good choice. Um, we have, if you have like a big five sporting goods in your area, Mm -hmm. something like that. Or played against sports and things like that. Highly recommend do not buy, especially the shoes, but oh, even when it comes shoes. to like shin guards and stuff, I, I don't know what it is about kids sports equipment, but it's whatever. like kids clothes, Ariel. No, it's not the same. That as t-shirt's $15. No, no, it's not. It's, no, it's not like kids clothes. I'm telling you, sports <laughs> equipment is so much harder because I go on Amazon and I'm like, okay, well, my kid is this height. So I think this is the right size shin guards. It is never right. I don't care what I do. I always end up returning everything at Amazon and going to big five sporting goods or Dick's sporting goods or one of these other sporting goods stores. So just learn from my mistake go to the sporting goods store because they will help like fit your child for yeah. their cleats like the cleats have to be a bit tighter than their normal shoes and and they have half sizes and it's i i know it sounds like nuts but you have to go don't, to the sports store don't buy it too early too because they're growing right well that's yeah don't buy it too early but um and you do have to go especially since you since I recommend you go to the sporting goods store to get your, especially the shoes, the other pieces, you know, maybe, but I found, honestly, I have found even the the volleyball knee pads didn't fit. The shin guards didn't fit. I've had to return so many things. The sporting goods store is the way, but you'll have to go far enough in advance too, because everyone's starting soccer at the same time. And so like my kid needed a three and a half and we had to drive like half an hour to go get a three and a half at another store. So um, don't shop super early. Don't shop at the last minute and definitely shop in person if you are able to. If you need to get anything that has to fit. If it's got, the, you know, I mean, yeah, sure, vol- buy your volley light online. But if it's got a fit, then like go to the sporting goods store. Um, they also, if you have a play against sports in your area, it's that would place. be good. You just want someone that's going to help you find the right size. You want to go someplace that can actually give you a little bit of sales representative help mm-hmm. to like put on a shoe, fit it, tell you if it's too tight or too loose or whatever, um, because it's just not like regular clothes and stuff. No, no. I think it's a good advice. So, yes, I think I think those are the main things that we have learned uh, in our few and, years and of ni- early sports. And a nice duffel bag as well that you can take to and from. Good yeah. water bottles. I We all have water bottles everywhere. Uh, my gosh, we have so many water bottles now. So many water um, bottles. But, yeah, like whenever you're going to the sports practice, it's like five or six water bottles in the bag. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. I think – you know, this is just for, for anyone who just hasn't played sports with yet with your kids. We remember playing them as kids. It is very different from a parent's perspective to get into sports and to take care of all the things about sports and make sure you sign up on time and you include everything they need and you make sure they got their gear and just, it's like a whole nother world. So hopefully this little primer is helpful as you embark. If you have not yet embarked on the world of kids sports, maybe this will help you know, save you a little bit of grief Maybe and give you some ideas about where to look. St- start a little thread on the Facebook group and, and see what other people's experiences have been as well to share and, and it's a collaborate. It's a mixed yeah. bag, it, I, I can it, tell you. It is very much dependent on your local area. 
Mm -hmm. and who runs your local clubs or ymcas or parks and rec departments or whatever you're playing at it it really depends it really depends but we hope you have a good time and hope your kids have a good experience with sports i think there's so much character building that can happen in sports and i think it's a great thing for anyone whether it's you know you're playing golf tennis basketball gymnastics cheer whatever it might be dance class Whatever it might be, I hope hope they have a good experience and and right. find it fulfilling. So and let us know if coaching your kids at sports is something that you are really interested in doing and you want Matt to do an episode all about. <laughs> like you know, no, I'm serious. Like the things that you have learned coaching because you've coached like four yeah. years now. Ariel, clap if you see me once. <laughs> clap twice if you see me. Clap three times if you can hear me. <laughs> <laughs> Some things we learned from the high school camp, but no, um, I think. I think, you know, coaching young kids is not easy. And I think you've learned a lot about coaching kids and some just some good advice and things. So if that's something that you or your spouse uh, are interested in doing and you want to hear Matt do an episode about that, if there's any interest in that, we will, you know, we can take that up at a later date. I'm signing you up for things. I'm volunteering you. How do we dominate, Matthew? How do we get the undefeated seasons? (laughs) No, I I think it just takes the right... You know, I think there's a real Listen, art to coaching young kids, and you're I've, great at it. You're at you. I am so super, super proud to be the I, coach's wife I have, because you're so good at it. Well, you just like all the free swag. There's they, no free swag. I just there absolutely is at the end of the season. There's free donuts. <laughs> yeah. I just think that you are fantastic at it, and everyone Pretty who's good. had you as a coach. I've, um, had, I've had two undefeated seasons. I've had a 500 season. I was tangentially responsible for an. an uh, t- total loss season. <laughs> so yeah, there's, you've been through a lot, I've but you're, you're a, lot, a great yeah. coach. So if that's something that interests people, let us know, uh, send us a message and we'll think about putting that on the, the list. Cause I think you would be great at uh, discussing that cause you're a great coach. So take care, everybody. Enjoy the sport. And- Thanks so much for joining us today and making us a part of your homeschool journey. Please engage with us on social media. Join our homeschool together podcast group on Facebook and find us at Homeschool Together Podcast on Instagram. We'd love to hear your feedback, questions, and recommendations. Until next time, happy homeschooling!